Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I am so pleased to have my next guest on, Stephen Tryon, author of Accountability Citizenship. How are you, sir? Great. Thanks so much for having me on this morning. Oh, absolutely. We're thrilled to have you here. Uh, your book, uh, I think, such an excellent uh, read in that uh, it gives people some tools that I think that they need so desperately. We, uh, you know, in my industry, broadcasting, there is, uh, an, unfortunately, a lot of opportunists and people who want to get out some of their own messaging. And in doing that, uh, it, uh, you know, the, the, the real business at hand of our government sometimes is skewed by that. And certainly uh, the way that we uh, act as human beings uh, affected by that as well. And this is one of the myths that we talk about in your book. That's right. You know, we're so fortunate uh, today to live in the information age and, and to benefit from the tremendous volume of information that's available to us. But I don't know that we've adapted appropriately <laughs> to that over the last 45 or 50 years. And I think right. it's actually discouraged effective citizens. Citizenship. And that's what I, what I say in the book. And of course, I offer uh, this notion that there are at least five myths uh, that we have to deal with in the information stream that are used to market and distribute information. Right. The first one, uh, and the one I'd like to talk about today, is the conspiracy myth. Absolutely. It's important to recognize that people have gotten to the point, as you said, when we say that they haven't necessarily uh, learned how to handle this information it has become an issue of people just blindly accepting what they see. It's on the internet, it must be true. Well, you know, and I don't know it's a change. It, we've always <laughs> been passive consumers of information. Certainly. It's just that now there's so much information coming at us so fast and it's much more targeted. Right. So I think the pernicious effects of being a passive consumer of having this information targeted at a bunch of passive consumers uh, are much greater today. And I, I think that's why we have to arm our electorate to be better consumers of information. And it becomes extremely important this uh, next cycle because we are on an off election, uh, off presidential election cycle. That's exactly right. You know, 2014 is, is uh, exactly the kind of year that I talk about. You know, I say that Congress, Article One of the Constitution is about Congress. 53% of the words in the Constitution is, are about Congress. It's about Congress. It That's is. the main lever. And, and this year is a congressional election. We should be focused on it. And we, 17% fewer voters uh, over the last 70 years or so go uh, turn out for these, uh, these kinds of elections, these off-cycle elections. We need to turn that around. Especially considering these are the people we, as you said, count on to do something. And frankly, they haven't. Yeah. They've, That's they've something we need to recognize. Us. They have passed one or two pieces of legislation, and literally, that's it. Everything well, else has been recognizing a new general or a new uh, a new judge. It's been very little that's actually taken place. Yeah, Congress Congress failed us last year, in the last uh, year, I think, and we need to address that in this election cycle. Uh, now, I think you're going to see uh, some effort to, to make some forward progress apparent uh, as, the, as we go into the election cycle. Right. There always is, but we need to focus on what's happened and on the whole picture. You know, but going back to this conspiracy yeah. myth, you can find evidence in, in current events <laughs> for what I'm trying to say about Indeed. the conspiracy myth. You know, the conspiracy myth has pernicious effects because uh, it's not that there are never conspiracies. You know, certainly there, there are conspiracies out there. You know, the conviction of this uh, Mr. Martoma with the uh, SAC capital. Certainly, if you look at the, at the constellation of facts there, it, it indicates that there's perhaps a conspiracy that, right. that's being unraveled. But uh, uh, we often use the conspiracy paradigm to explain things where there are no conspiracies. Uh, it makes it simpler for the readers to grasp. It attracts viewers. It attracts listeners. It helps us sell advertising. But it also creates a negative mindset. Uh, and the people who accept the conspiracy, because now they see an evil that they have to oppose, right? And they're able to justify evil themselves. Uh, so so I, that's yeah. that's the danger. It's that issue of sublimation, finding the worst in others you like least about yourself. You, you start to look at these people and think, oh, well, they're so bad, and then you forget, well, you are not always perfect yourself. That's correct. <laughs> it becomes, uh, as you said, very pernicious. Well, you know, and, and if you if you study history and you look at how the Nazis trained their guards in the SS, they used words, patterns of words, over and over again that the guards repeated, and this was these were reported by Holocaust survivors. Uh, Elaine Scarry's book, The Body in Pain, reports a specific example, and. Uh, you know, uh, the, the pattern of words essentially uh, uh, takes the victims and makes them less than human or makes them, them less than equal to the guards. And that's the pattern of conditioning the guards so that they are able to do evil themselves to these other human beings. And, and that's the danger of the conspiracy myth. And, and if you don't think it's real, 
go back and read some of the articles about, uh, you know, Wall Street Journal, other, other major publications, about the texts back and forth on the Bridgegate scandal in New right. Jersey. Yeah, you and know? that's a prime example. Give, uh, let's talk a little more about that because it's one that's very much in the news right now. We're seeing uh, I don't know, a lot of uh, all the emails and things that have been released lately, the texts, as you said. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, you know, there, there was one exchange that particularly caught my attention, and that was uh, where, where uh, uh, one of, of the uh, aides uh, to Governor Christie uh, questioned th the idea of creating this traffic uh, issue, and uh, uh, the reply from, from, uh, from, I believe, the aide that went to high school with Governor Christie you know, the, the, the query was, look, should we really be doing this? Think of all the children on the school buses that are going to be, uh, that are, that are going to be held up for hours right. by this traffic. And, and the reply from the aide was, they are the children of Bono voters. Wow. Which, you know, Bono being the Democratic opponent uh, of, of uh, Governor Christie, uh, you know, the, the connotation there is that they are evil. They are the other. Uh, and that's the danger of the conspiracy myth. Yeah, you know? especially somebody like that who's so, I mean, we look at somebody who's so ingrained in the, in the political structure there and not seeing the forest for the trees. Well, yeah, it's these amazing. Are, these are intelligent people. They're high achieving people. That's why they're there. But they've been conditioned or, or they've allowed themselves to be conditioned in this way to, to view the other as that evil that they would actually put children uh, at risk or, or uh, through hardship. Uh, to justify their, their uh, ends or to further their ends. That's something we need to change. And we can change the level of our dialogue in 2014. We can make our, civil, our, our, our political dialogue more civil. Uh, and by doing that, I think we'll encourage more, uh, more participation and more effective citizenship. Cutting through the minutia and getting to the heart of matters seems to be our biggest challenge, is it not? Yeah, it sure is. You know, there, there's an awful lot of great, uh, uh, great thinking on both sides uh, of the aisle up there in Washington. We just need to get away from the, the rhetoric, and we need to be focused on the facts, and we need to teach our, our young people as they uh, uh, come through our school system how to process information in, in a rational way and how to deal with the way our information stream works. It's not that our information stream is bad. I mean, we live in the greatest republic in the world, and I love the, the, the media and the free press, but we have to train our, our ourselves to be effective consumers of information. I sure appreciate you saying the word republic. So many people don't get that. They always go right to democracy, and uh, we you know we do live in a republic. Let's talk about for just a moment. Do we have just a moment to wrap things up? The things that should should be happening in our mindset as we are looking at the information that we're gathering and how we should gather it. Well, you know, uh, in, on my if we can go to my last slide, I kind of summarize. Right. Uh, accountability, citizenship, and, and the three things I, I talk about. I like, like to talk about being appropriately positive, which means being an active consumer of information, being appropriately informed, which means seeking a balanced view. If, if you, we all have biases. Understand sure what do. your biases are and, and, and seek uh, an, an honest view from the other side, and then being appropriately engaged. Reach out and communicate. And if you need some help with that, come uh, look on Accountability Citizenship's Facebook page. Uh, ask me questions. I'm, I'm happy to help. And, and uh, also at accountabilitycitizenship.org. I'm going to publish a workbook this summer, Accountability Citizenship Workbook, where I'll be focusing on specific issues and trying to apply this paradigm that I talk about in, in the book, in, in the first book. I'll be applying the paradigm to specific issues. You'll have to turn to the back to see my personal opinions. I'll try to keep my personal opinions <laughs> right? out as much as I can. <laughs> the answer key is always in the back upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so right. put it like that, if you will. That's right. uh, as always, Stephen Tryon, thank you so very much for being here and reminding us uh, how important it is to be part of the process, but not uh, be consumed by the process. I think that's the Great. way I look at it right there. Perfect. Excellent. All thank right, you. Stephen Tryon.